All right, here we go. Episode 313, Traveling with Money in America. You know, when I first heard about this, like I said, I didn't believe it. I said, no, there's an angle here. Obviously, this must be criminals. And the more research I, I did, it was just the same sad story over and over and over again. So I said, well, I was going to hold off on doing this show a little bit later down the road. But I said, there's no point in waiting because it's all one sad story. The sad story was, let me just stop there a second. You and I most likely have a fear of losing something valuable. It could be anything. Something that means something to you. Something of worth. So imagine one day you looking around, you go, I can't find it. What, what, I lost it. That's a fear. A lot of people have fear of being robbed. You know, stick them up. Give me everything you got. Nobody wants that. Or being subject to theft from a friend, an acquaintance, a family member. That would be disappointing. You don't want that to happen to you. But one thing that you won't have a fear of, you shouldn't, is, you know what, I'm afraid that the government's going to come and rob me. And not everybody trusts the government. I know that and you know that. But nobody expects to have their money taken just because. So, let's get into it. If you travel and you go to an airport in the United States, you're traveling within the United States, not abroad, not internationally. You can withdraw or pull up your mattress and take all your money with you. There's no law that says you can. An example of that would, you could go to the bank, drive in your car, and let's say you have $10,000 in the bank. And go to the clerk and say, I want to make a withdrawal. Write that slip, $10,000. Clerk looks at you like you want it in a bag, in an envelope. What's the story here? And you take it. And you drive in your car down the block. Not a worry in the world that the government will come and take it from you. But if you think the same thing would happen in the airport, would be wrong. Thousands of Americans are going to the airport and they're traveling with money. Cash. You know, cash. As a result, the government is or may not or they may have an interest in the money that you have in your pocket and they may take it. So let me explain. You get to the airport, you got to go through TSA. Hmm. That's the first complication. Part of Homeland Security, you will empty out your pockets, take off your shoes. You know the routine. Take off your belt and um, put your carry-on luggage on the conveyor belt and walk away. You'll take off watch, rings, all that. You know, one thing that really I think about, you go to the theme park, you don't have to do all that shit, but at the airport you do. All right, back to the story. So there goes your carry-on down the conveyor belt, and the TSA employee is looking at that computer screen, you know, like a television camera, x-ray, and they see your socks, underwears, and everything else, and they go, what the hell is that? It's got a rubber band around it. And holy crap, it's money. 
Hmm. Then, while you're on the other side of the conveyor belt, as you go down the aisle, putting on your shoes because you've passed inspection, they're not going to say a word to you. Nothing. Why? Because it's not illegal. Remember, TSA, Homeland Security, is just there. Make sure you have no weapons, bombs, service to air missiles. That's what they're there for. So money's not, you know, you know, thanks for coming. You can go. But then around the checkoff area, the, the checkpoint area, there are agents, federal agents, dressed like tourists, looking stupid with backpacks and, you know, sneakers. And they're acting and fooling people that they're travelers. Usually a group of a squad, four or five of them. And the TSA guy just gave the signal. And they pointed you out that they, that signal is, they discovered in your carry-on or in your pocket on your person, because you didn't empty out the money, you kept it in your pocket, but it got picked up on the x-ray, large amounts of money. So, you know, we are $35 trillion in the hole. They go after you. And they'll give you the bull story. Are you carrying anything in your bag that might be in danger? I'm agent so-and-so of the blank, blank agency, because there's more than one agency. Now, the best one out of all of them is the DEA, okay? Drug Enforcement Agency, because they've confiscated the most amounts of money. So here you are, you're at your terminal, you're sitting there, they show up, they surprise you, they go, can you open up your bag? you have anything in there? There might be an explosive, something threatening. They act like it's a um, continuation of the security checkoff, checkpoint. But it's not. It has nothing to do with security. In fact, the court system back in 03, uh, I believe it was the Supreme Court, told them to knock that off. Okay because they don't do security. Drug enforcement agents. You get it? You're starting to pick up what I'm putting down? So they do the charade. Sometimes they bring a dog to get some sniff your bag. But it's all a charade, because the bottom line is it's like a three-card Monty. You know, I'm, okay, let me slow down. It, you have the little coconuts, and then you put one of the nuts underneath the coconut, and then you shuffle them around. And the guy says, which of the coconuts is the nut? And you point, and oh, shit, you lost. Okay. They also do it with cards, and it's called three-card Monty. Okay, now that we got you up to speed, we'll continue. So it's all a charade because the TSA guy has already signaled them that you have money on you. There's nowhere to go. You're at the terminal, you're stuck. And you're trying to get on that flight. So they know you're trying to get on that flight and they're going to put a lot of pressure on you for you to leave that bag. And they're going to say interesting things to you like, do you have anything inside that bag that might be a danger to this flight? Oh, I just came through the checkpoint. They said I was good. Hmm, okay. Well, we got to take a look inside it. And do you consent? And then if you say, no, I don't consent. Well, you ain't getting on the plane, pal. Am I being detained? And they're going to tell you this strange thing. You ready? Hope you're sitting down. No, you are not detained, but your bag is. What the hell? Let me repeat that. Am I detained? No. You are not detained. You can get on that flight and keep going. But your bag is. Hmm. Now you have to make a decision. Will I leave the five grand that's in the bag and get on the flight? 
Or do I stay in here and try to figure out what this is? So a lot of people try to figure out what it is, and they start saying, well, I haven't done anything. What did I do? I didn't do anything. And they're going to tell you, well, just open up the bag, and then we'll go through this BS about signing a consent, no consent, verbal consent, all this shit. So the bottom line is once they find finally open up the carry-on bag, they're going to discover what they already got tipped off to by the snitch over at TSA, and they're going to say, aha, why are you traveling with this much money? And now, all of a sudden, the United States Constitution goes out the window, and the government doesn't have to prove your guilt. No, no, we don't do that at the airport. You have to prove your innocence. Therefore, you have to explain to them why you have $5,000 in cash inside your carry-on. Quickly! And you go, well, I took out the money because I owed it to somebody else and because I was going to go buy a bicycle and then ride it all the way back to my house. And here, you know, the bicycle I'm going to buy and this is the guy I'm going to go see. And they go, not good enough. We are going to take it under what they call a civil asset forfeiture. Gone. Right in the pocket. So what are we doing? And you're like, what? What do you mean you're taking it? That's right. You're free to go. But your bag is being detained. Most importantly, your money. Then they tell you you can, you know, file to get it back. You know, like, Real easy to do. You'll probably get it back before the flight lands. Bull, you know what. So let's break this down a little bit more. And let's look at the civil asset forfeiture laws. There's certain things that might be in your brain right now, like it was in mine. And I said, you're a suspect? And some of the research I did, these people were saying, am I being detained? And they would always say, no, you're not. You're free to go. Your bag is being detained. Did I do anything wrong? We don't know. We just don't know. Until we pop open your suitcase and find your money, then we'll tell you. And they make it seem that the money that you have is some sinister plot to go somewhere. And they seize it. And then you will go through hell. Years. If you're lucky. To get it back. You'll even hire a lawyer. And I don't know if you don't know. But I'm going to let you in on a little secret. The lawyers. They don't work for free. So before you know it, you're trying to get five grand that they took from you and you owe the lawyer 2,500, right? It's a loss. It's a loss. Now, under the forfeiture laws in America, in the U.S., United States, you know, Washington up there with Uncle Joe, If you win your case, you have to be reimbursed for your legal costs. (laughs) Okay. So, you understand where we're going here? In 2023, this charade at the airport netted the U.S. government one billion would it be in forfeitures. Did you hear what I just said? Are you paying attention? One billion dollars, 2023. They stole one billion dollars from people at the airport. Now let's think about this with an open mind and not be so cruel. Are there drug dealers that might be going through the airport? Yeah, it could be. Yeah, but usually, in order to 
closed that case, you probably, as an agency, did surveillance. You have an intel. You're following them around. They got a flight. They're going to get on the airplane. They probably got the goods in their bag or the money to pay for the stuff. And then you zero in on them. But not here. Nobody followed you there. You're not a part of any investigation. You were just randomly selected by the goof over at TSA that said, right there, we got the money there. That's it. And they're going to take it. Because you have to prove your innocence. The government doesn't have to prove your guilt. Hello, is this thing on? I don't know if it's on. Did you hear what I just said? You have to prove your innocence in order to get your money back. And you got to waste money, time, effort, lawyers, lawyers, lawyers. You got to get the law. This is the shit that lawyers do. Now, we're also going to talk about the worms that are missing. The worms are our government officials called politicians. You know, the clowns we send up to Washington. What the hell are they doing? Anyway, we'll get to them in a minute. So, $1 billion was seized in 2023. Now, the money you may think goes straight to the U.S. Treasury, but you would be wrong. It actually goes to the Department of Justice. Hmm. Not Treasury, not the general fund. So, it's a civil asset forfeiture, and it goes to Justice Department, it doesn't go to the Treasury General Fund. That is some trickery right there. Makes you think there's a lot of things wrong. So there is one congressman that for the last decade, that's 10 years for our friends in California, that has tried to pass what's called the Fair the FAIR Act. It's House Rule 1525. And they're trying to pass it with the 118th Congress. That's the bozos we got in there now. It was first shown in 2023. They ran out of time, and now it's the H.R. 1525, 2023, slash 2024 bill. Because Congress can't get their head out of their ass to approve this. You wonder why. But they're trying to change aspects of the law. Not say you can't do it. I mean, you can do it. I mean, obviously, there are crooks that do these type of things. And this is why we need to do it. You know, like the Patriot Act. Remember that? Remember that with uh, George W. back in the old one when we... Terrorists knocked down the building and the whole thing. They, I think it was all two. They started with the Patriot Act. Patriot, dun, 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 dun. the Patriot Act. We want to listen to conversations, and it's not you guys, not you. You guys are Americans. It's those evil terrorists, and they've stuck the ter- the Patriot Act up our caboose that we can't breathe anymore. But it's one of those things. This is affecting innocent Americans. In my research, I discovered people that one person that took out $45,000 and it was an elderly man. He gave it to his children. They were going to go pay for his medical expenses, something similar to that. And um, poof, the magic dragon, the 45 grand went up in smoke. Another guy was, his mother and father died in Louisiana during a hurricane. And he got a small sum of money, about $28,000 from their death. And he was trying to get on a plane to buy a tow truck because he was a tow truck driver. And he wanted to buy a better one. 
So he saw one ad, and instead of driving over there, because remember, the tow truck he has ain't that good, he decided to fly over there. And as a result, he was stopped. Now, another curious thing for our African-American community, or minorities as well, the federal agents like to target based on their own statistics and what they write, the vast majority of the people they're stopping are black males. Nothing to see here, folks. And they see them through the checkpoint carrying money. They will take it. Give me a second because my computer sees an override. So I have to see where I left off. So long, if, if you ever did podcasting, the system that you use on Apple, it's called GarageBand. Well, people that do podcasts call it Garbage Band. And this is an example. So it just, it's freaked out. And I'll, wait one second. Trying to figure out where I left off. Come here, break. All right, nothing to see here, folks. That's where I left off. So anyway, this poor gentleman, he gets uh, the money confiscated. He doesn't even have money for lawyers. A group called the Institute for Justice will represent him for free. And he got his $28,000 back. It's disgusting. I can continue going over and over and over all these things. Did you hear what I said before? 2023, one over, over, that means more than, one billion dollars they confiscated. Why? And 90% of what they've confiscated has no arrest, and they weren't suspects of anything. They just took the money. This is happening. It's scary. All right. So in H.R. 1525, that they've trying, tried for 10 years to pass, looks good. This year looks good, pal. It looks good. The 118th Congress, if they get their thumbs out of their ass, they will pass this. But it's only going to have certain changes. And the changes are to raise the evidence standard from preponderance of evidence to clear and convincing evidence. Now you like them apples, huh? So in other words, no guessing. You got to know that the money, its origin, is it illicit or not illicit? I don't know about you, because I'm not a lawyer, but the wording to me sounds funny, and I think instead of confiscating $1 billion, they're going to confiscate $500 million. This is bullshit. It should be stopped immediately. Listen, if you're in law enforcement and you're doing an investigation and you're telling somebody and you know they got on an airport and they got money with them and all that, and you, boom, you got them. Okay, fine. Take your civil asset forfeiture and take their money. But these are innocent people. For whatever reason, they want to travel with money, and it's perfectly legal. So you should be upset, because I am. This is why it's important to vote. This is why it's important to get on the horn, send your representative in Congress a a love letter, an email every once in a while about, please, I hope you're very busy up there in Washington. I'm just 
writing to let you know, could you please remove your thumb from your anus and get HR 1525 passed? Thank you. Signed, humble constituent. All right, so without sounding like Mr. Magoo anymore, we're going to wrap this up. Our government is totally dishonest and disgusting. Here's the best part of it. You ready? I hope you're sitting down for this one. These federal agencies don't have enough agents to play mugger at the airport. So what they do is they hire police departments in the state where they're doing this, in the airport. Okay? So whatever airport in America you're at, it doesn't matter if that police agency that they're going to hire to help them do this operation is next to the airport. You could be 50 miles away. They don't give a shit. They're going to deputize you. You're going to go along with the other agents. And you get to play mugger. That agency that loaned you out for the muggings will get 9%, 9% of the money, of the take. You can't make this shit up. And nobody can make this up because you'd have to think of all this shit in your head. They're doing this every day. Today, as you sit there today, some airport in America, some American is sitting down bewildered saying, how can they just take my money? Something to think about. I definitely will have another episode on this, especially if our Congress people remove their finger out of their anus and get H.R. 1525 passed. So we're going to talk about this again, but it's disgusting. You should get upset, and you should try to reach out to your congressperson You know, sometimes I think these people in Congress are all in the witness protection agency. Nobody ever contacts them. Nobody talks to them. They get away with murder. They ain't doing shit up there but drinking coffee. All right, I've said enough. Up next, episode 314, No Report, August 28th. This one's another doozy. It deals with police departments in America and the FBI. And the title is No Report. I'll give you a hint. If I don't report something, it never happened. Got it? Well, there we have it, folks. Another episode that should have opened up your mind, your heart, and should have gotten you some passionate blood circulating so you can get angry. And make sure that anger makes you go vote November 5th. Or prior, if you have early elections, get on that too. Okay? But this is the kind of stuff we have to change as Americans. I don't care if you're white, black, blue, brown, purple, an alien. Not not that alien. The, the Martian alien. You guys just got your mind in the gutter. So you've got to fight back. You know, we can't just have this. You know, it could be your kid. Your child going through the airport. They just take it. Hey, you, get over here. What you got in the bag? This is bullshit. As always, continue to pray for yourself because without you, we have nothing. Continue to pray for your community. 
the law enforcement agencies that serve you, and most importantly, for the United States of America. This is Alpha Mike, and I'll see you downrange.